I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a pull an audible here and uh, say this is this is against the rules, but I think I can change the rules. I want to invite Robert Campbell to come up here and share a little bit about Rena. Hank, you stay you stay too. Between the two of you, you guys can you guys can do it. Can it have a preacher as a guest and not invite them up to the pulpit? Come on. First of all, I want to say. Bless this house. Bless this congregation. And may our Father continue to smile down upon us. Strengthen us to be able to do the works that we have been called to do. I want to say also thank you for sharing the plate. It gives us the opportunity to bring young people into a summer enrichment camp that is focusing on the environment, especially climate change, and how to look forward towards clean energy. Uh, One of the things that we'll be doing is a solar panel project, creating the solar panel, creating a a way to harvest the energy from the sun, give them technology, and also the skills as an engineer to design the panel and the workings that goes with the panel. So I want to say again, thank you for allowing me to be here to be a part of this great service. I tell you, it, uh, each time I come, you know, it's a, a learning experiment for me. Uh, and I enjoy every time the voices that come out of our youth. They are so pleasing. It's just like God has sent us angels here on this earth to sing his praise. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me just add a little bit for those that might not be too familiar with the history of, of Rena. Um, the history is an example of resilience against environmental injustice. Because that community was located in a legal no man's land between Chapel Hill and Carborough, the town of Chapel Hill erected an unlined landfill adjacent to it in 1972. It was supposed to last only 10 years, was compensating measures for Rena promised. However, in 1980, rather than closing it, the landfill was further expanded. It took another 30 years before irate residents of Chapel Hill, including many members of this church, forced its closing in 2013. By that time, only 20% of the resident wells tested that met APA standards. So this week's summer camp, like the Reverend is telling you about, is really a wonderful opportunity for us to support these kids to have an unforgettable vacation. Thank you. Thank you, Hank, and thank you, Reverend Campbell. We had our first service today outside at the uh, Memorial Rock Amphitheater, and so we were in there in the woods, and I was thinking about what story I had, and, and I thought it would be good if we could just imagine those, those woods changed into the Amazon rainforest, and so we did that. So it'll take a little bit extra, um, a little bit of, of extra imagination to transform this space. Has anyone ever been, anybody here ever been to the Amazon rainforest? Uh, one? Two, a couple, a couple got first up there. Um, I, I had uh, the really good fortune to be able to take my first sabbatical um, in, in Ecuador. And while I was there, I, I took a trip over for about a week in the Amazon rainforest. And to imagine it, it is to be uh, surrounded. Imagine being surrounded um, on, on all sides. Looking up, you cannot see the sky because there are so many trees and so many animals up in, the, up in the leaves of the canopy. And you look down, and you can barely see the ground. So, so thick is the foliage. And you look to the side, 360 degrees around, and there is just life. Um, and so we were there. And uh, a couple of stories about being in the Amazon to help, help your imagination go. First story is we were there, we had just got there, and we were uh, sitting, there was an open air hut where we were having our first meal in the rainforest, and we had sat down, no sooner we sat down to the meal than something fell from 
the, fell from the ceiling of the open-air hut and grazed the back of the person I was sitting next to, and it was a lizard about this long that had fallen from the ceiling and just ran away on the floor. And it's, it's every, life's so much around that even lizards fall from, fall from the sky. Um, and then we were out, well, the next day we were out, and our activity for, for a little while was to go piranha fishing. And so we had this little stick and a little line on the end of the stick and a little crude hook, and then he had cut up little squares. Uh, our guide had cut up squares of meat and said, make sure to fish on the, the left side of the boat. So we uh, fished, so we would dip it in the water, and then phew, the meat was gone. We didn't catch a single piranha, but as soon as we touched the water, phew, the meat was gone. And we did that for about 20 minutes, and we thought, oh, I, you know, we're not, we're not catching anything. And so we began to get a little bit bored. And so the guide said, well, let's, let's stop fishing, then let's go swimming. <laughs> and we all looked at the guide. We all looked at the guide like he was... Uh, like, this was, this was absurd. And, and the guide said, I'm not kidding, he said, well, you've been fishing off the left side of the boat. We're going to go swimming off the right side of the boat. <laughs> and he just took off his shirt and just jumped in and swam around, did the backstroke, did the breaststroke, and so we, it was hot, and we all jumped in, too. Um, and then it was uh, the guide actually pointed down the river, and there uh, came a uh, small group of pink river dolphins swimming down that we got to swim with. So that's imagining. Imagine the rainforest. This is a story called The Great Kapok Tree by Lynn Cherry. Two men walked into the rainforest moments before the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. And I'll tell you, I'm going to need a little help here, so when I get to some sounds, I'm going to cue you and invite you to made sure to make some sounds. Now all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to the great kapok tree. Then he left. The smaller man took the axe he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. So I need the people on this side to say, whack. whack. And I need people on this side to say, chop. And so he said, I want you to go, The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. The man wiped the sweat that ran down his face and neck and continued. And soon, oh, you guys are awesome. That was fantastic. Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree, and before he knew it, the heat and hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the great kapok tree. Can I get some, some boa constrictor? You all are good. Slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping, the boa constrictor looked at the gash the axe had made in the tree, and the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Good. And said, this tree, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. And just then, a bee came down. We hear some buzzing. And the bee buzzed in the man's ear, said, This, my hive, my hive is in the kapok tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower, collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. If I can't make my home in this tree, I can't pollinate the flowers and make more. Just then, a troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy. I heard some monkeys, some good monkeys, and I think I heard some monkeys who need a little bit of work. <laughs> and the monkeys whispered in the man's ear, we've seen 
the ways of your kind. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. So when the heavy rain comes, the soil will be washed away, and the forest will become a desert. Next, a toucan and a macaw flew down from the canopy. I'm get, so this side's playing really well. This side isn't playing so well. Kate on this side. All right. And the, the, the birds, they squawked. You must not cut down this tree. We've flown over the rainforest, and we see what happens when you begin to chop down the trees. People come and settle on the land. They set fires and clear the underbush, and soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, now only smoldering ruins remain. The next visitor also made his home in the tree. It was a bright, small tree frog who crawled down a leaf. Oh, all right. And in a squeaky voice, the tree frog piped in the man's ear, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives. You will leave us homeless if you chop down the great kapok tree. And just then, a jaguar woke up. The jaguar had been sleeping in the branches. Roar. All right. The jaguar, with his spotted coat, blended into the dappled light and snuck, crept down, padded silently over to the sleeping man, and the jaguar growled in his ear. Joe, the kapok tree is the home to birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Good luck with this one here. Next, four tree porcupines. I have no idea. Swung down branch to branch and whispered to the man, do you know what animals and humans need in order to live? We need oxygen, fresh air. And do you know what this tree produces? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us Life. The porcupines were followed by several anteaters, which I've heard for the anteaters. <laughs> Practice eating those ants. And the anteater said to the sleeping man, You're chopping down this tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. You've been told to chop down a beautiful tree. That person, though, does not think of his own children and their children who must live in a world without this tree. Up in the high branches, a tree, a three-toed sloth, had begun, had begun crawling down slowly at the first sight of the man. Yeah, we can, we can snore. And just then, the sloth reached the man, and in a deep, slow voice, the sloth asked, How much is beauty worth? Can you live without beauty? If you destroy the beauty of the forest, on what will you feast your eyes? The man awoke. And all around him were all the creatures that depended on the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The end. We've been greatly blessed. And this morning in our offering, we have the opportunity to extend this blessing beyond these walls into this community. Um, as the baskets come around, I invite us to give generously uh, to our Share the Plate offering for the work of the Rogers Eubanks Neighborhood Association 
and the environmental summer camp. Thank you.